So I am going to speak on interchangeable uh, insulin. And uh, we have been listening to uh, Mithun. And uh, this is just a continuation of what Mithun has left over. And, uh, and I will be discussing on why we should require an interchangeable glargin for our country. <clears throat> and uh, this is a snapshot from a wax museum added to say in London. And uh, sometimes it is very, very difficult to differentiate between the original and the replica. Of course, uh, this is not meant for that, but when you are having multiple choices in the market, when you have multiple biosimilars in the market, it becomes even more difficult for uh, an ordinary doctor, even an expert, uh, to pick up the best from among the lot. So this is going to give you a guidance. So my brief lecture is going to provide you with a guidance on how to choose the best among the lot. When you have multiple choices to pick up from the biosimilar market in India. And uh, if you look at the Indian scenario and Indian market, you have a tsunami of generics in the market. So we have maybe more than 300 pharmaceutical companies marketing depaglucosin and the same with amoxicillin, clavulanic acid combinations. But when you compare the generics with biologics or biosimilars, the biosimilars are larger molecules. The biosimilars are much more complex molecules. And the biologics are developed from living organisms from cultured yeast or bacteria. And uh, it requires a comprehensive analysis and bioassay. And uh, most of these biologicals, you know, in contrast to the generics, they are injectables. They are given parenterally. And we are also concerned about temperature sensitivity. You cannot store insulin uh, in a hot environment. So extremes of temperature might destroy the potency of a biologic. And it is also prone for immunogenicity and also other adverse effects of a drug. So during the process of developing a biosimilar molecule, actually it goes through the same difficult stringent process similar to developing an innovator drug. So how do you define a biosimilar? If somebody is asking you, define a biosimilar. A biosimilar is a biological drug <clears throat> and it is similar to an existing insulin. But you cannot consider biosimilar as an exact copy of the original insulin because the entire manufacturing process, the entire manufacturing process is dif different. So it goes through different cell lines and it goes through uh, different protein sources. The extraction process is different. The purification process is different. And biosimilars are not bioidentical and biosimilars are not to be considered as biomimics or biobetters. So now the question is, why we are here at Diabetes India? <clears throat> why we keep on conducting, organizing conferences? Dr. Manoj Chawla is uh, organizing another big program in the month of May from 5, 6, and 7th hours. Midun, Manoj, myself, Benshi. So all of us are organizing a detailed course. So why are we requiring uh, newer therapies? Why do you require uh, the technologies, newer medications? Why do you require continuous education process? The reason is, Every five seconds, someone in the world is dying of diabetes. So every five seconds, there is a death due to diabetes. So we require continuous education learning, and we need to adopt whatever is new and with evidence to be offered to our patients. Because that is a scenario globally, where though we know that diabetes needs to be diagnosed early, we are diagnosing it very late. We know that insulin injury started very early in diabetes, but unfortunately, insulin is still provided very late in diabetes. And we are treating complications rather than preventing the complications. So the earlier, the better, but it seldom happens in real life. And the entire objective of this discussion is to make you aware of the fact that we have now the tools with us. We do have the formulations with us so that we can start insulin sufficiently earlier rather than in the Indian scenario, we are waiting for almost one decade. It is eight to 10 years of waiting before you start insulin. And by the time you are starting insulin after the onset of a neuropathy or a retinopathy, when you are probably convincing the patient, of course, you are having two complications, my dear friend. And now, Please allow me to start insulin. That shouldn't be the scenario. 
we should be able to start insulin ideally before even the onset of a neuropathy or a nephropathy. And that is why you require solutions. And we need to convince our patients that insulin is to be started early. And for my patients, I used to show them some pictures. By the time diabetes is diagnosed, 50 to 70 or even 80% of the beta cells have declined. And the insulin secretory deficiency is an ongoing process. It's a continuous process. And when somebody, for example, if you are the doctor who is starting insulin early, then I would call it, it is an intelligent decision by a brilliant physician. Because you will be the doctor who is starting a basal insulin very early, who will be helping your patients. You'll be supporting your patients in preventing the long-term complications of diabetes. It is possible. And we know this for many, many decades. If you're starting insulin sufficiently early, even after 10 or 20 years, they will require only very small doses of insulin. Number one. Number two, you are going to control diabetes aggressively and you are going to be successful in preventing most of those complications. And even a high school child, even a high school child knows that hemoglobin A1C, if you can reduce by 1%, it can even reduce the deaths by 21%. So we are aware. We are aware for many, many decades. And <clears throat> even doctors in other specialties, even a general practitioner is aware. Because all of us are attending the conferences. All of us are learning and reading. And we have become probably more educated after COVID. Exposing to multiple programs online. And the legacy effect is also known to all of us. If you are successful in intensively managing diabetes in the beginning, in the initial years, even after 30 years, the legacy effect continues in successfully averting the complications of the disease. It is possible. And now is the time that we should be discussing the differences between switching and interchangeability. A switching a drug, one drug to the other, can be done only by a doctor or a healthcare professional. Whereas in the United States, if a drug is given, the designation is interchangeability. That means even a pharmacist can substitute. One medicine can be given for the other. So if the prescription is for the original glargin landus, the pharmacist can substitute it for Biocon's glargin because it is now found to be an interchangeable glargin. It can be safely given instead of the original insulin and that too at a very, very low cost. And how can this happen? How did it happen? It has happened because of robust evidence which has been generated from well-conducted randomized clinical trials. So let us uh, now go back to what has happened in the past. Biocon's Glardin got approved in India in 2009. And all of us have been using this insulin for a long time now. And then it has been approved in Malaysia, in, the, in some of the countries in Asia. And I have been fortunate to lecture in some of these areas. And I still remember those good old days. And off late in 2020, the US FDA has approved Glardin, Biocon's Glardin. And that has been a milestone, a big accomplishment for the Indian pharmaceutical. I, I would say that it is a Made in India discovery, which is globally now accepted and adopted. And another big thing, the next big thing that has happened was in 2021, when Biocon's Glardin has been provided with the interchangeable designation. And I would say that that is the end of it. That is the end of it, and that is a dream come true for any manufacturer or any designer for a biosimilar to get approved as an interchangeable Glardin. And that too, in the most stringent of one of the markets in the world, that is the US FDA. And these are the number of clinical trials, almost 2,000 patients in 20 countries. Because remember, even though it is the same insulin, the manufacturing process has been entirely different. So you need to prove, you need to conduct even the PKPD studies to prove that this insulin, Basilog, is having the same PKPD properties. It's having the same safety. It's having the same efficacy when compared to the innovator insulin. And you have the Japanese studies, you have the Malaysian studies, you have the 
India-based Iraq study, the U.S. process change study, the real-world evidence, and so on. So in the next five to ten minutes, uh, let us go back to the classrooms, and I will briefly go through. So let us go through some of these pivotal clinical trials, which has culminated in the approval of these drugs in one of those developed nations, especially in the United States. So I will start with INSTRAD-1. And INSTRAD-1, as uh, the term indicates, it is a study conducted in subjects with type 1 diabetes to establish the efficacy and the safety of Biocon Glarvin. And uh, this has been a multi-center study. Remember, this is for the approval as an indication. A total of 558 subjects. So this is very similar to a study being conducted in a for a new drug. And aged between 18 and 65 years, and the patients were randomized in a one is one fashion, either to biocon up or to reference insulin glargin for a total of 52 weeks, a long duration, and the follow up for another one month. Look at the data the hemoglobin A1C reduction on the left, and on the right, you have the fasting plasma glucose. So it is almost overlapping with each other, establishing that, that it is non inferior. Bioclones glar is non inferior. And, and in some of these areas, I, it even appears that Bioclones glar is better than the original glar. <clears throat> so the LS mean difference between glar and the reference glar was similar at weeks 24 and 52. And there were no statistically significant differences in the hemoglobin A1C profiles between the two arms. And during the time when you are treating type 1 diabetes, the patients will be given a basal insulin. And they will also be on a bonus insulin. And there were no statistically significant differences between the dosages of either basal or bonus in between the two groups. And what about the hyperglycemia? Because as physicians and even our patients, both type 1 and type 2, they are all scared of hyperglycemia. And the hyperglycemia and other reverse events were also similar between the two arms. So now, let us have a discussion on INSTRAD 2 in type 2 diabetes, a similar design with 560 patients. Type 2 diabetes diagnosed at least one year before the screen. And again, one is to one randomization, but the difference is the duration is only for six months, 24 weeks, because in type 1, it requires a longer time. And the patients are followed for another one month. So the primary endpoint is again hemoglobin A1C reduction. And the secondary endpoint is fasting plasma. The Total dose of insulin, SMBG data, and of course, we will also be looking at the hyperglycemia data. And again, very, very impressive results. The actual hemoglobin A1C over time. And it is exactly, it is overlapping with each other. And this is Biocon's glargin compared with the reference Landers. And this is the change in the hemoglobin A1C and the actual glargin dose over the time. And that also appears to be almost exactly similar between the two formulations, so Biocon's glargin and the reference glargin. So what are the broad conclusions? The mean hemoglobin A1C change, 0.6 and 0.6 percentage, and the results have demonstrated that Biocon's glargin is non-inferior to the Landers in patients with type 2 diabetes. And the fasting glucose is almost the same, and the rates of hypo and other adverse events were also comparable between the two groups. So there is one more study there is one more study, a pivotal study in type 1 diabetes, and this was also a regulatory requirement. And uh, there is something very special in this study. It was a switching study, and there is a switching sequence. It is not a study which is similar to INSTRAD 1 or 2. And almost all the patients who were enrolled for INSTRAD 1 were originally those patients who have completed INSTRAD 1, and those who were on glargin, original glargin for 52 weeks. So that was the prerequisite. And the subjects were randomized to either uh, continue the original landers along with the bonus insulin, or this is a switching sequence, very simple switching sequence. The initial 12 weeks on biosimilar insulin, and from the biosimilar insulin, they were switched over to landers and continued for 12 weeks, and then back to again Bicon insulin and Lisbro. So it is a basal bonus classical regimen. In type 1 diabetes, the patients were. Uh, originally stabilized on landers, and then they were randomized to a switching sequence as described here, each one for 12 weeks. So what were the results? And uh, this is the primary endpoint, the hemoglobin AC change from baseline to week 36. With Biocon's glargin was equivalent to 
the reference glanders. And with respect to any time hypoglycemia, overall hypoglycemia, remember this is not type 2 diabetes, this is type 1 diabetes, more difficult to treat. And even in type 1 diabetes, any time hypo events were comparable between the two groups and there were no instances of any severe hypoglycemic events. And another question is on immunogenicity. So we are all concerned about immunogenicity when we started using biosimilar insulin, but Biocon's glargin is the one which is probably, uh, in India we have been using it for a very pretty long time and we have never encountered any serious adverse events. And equivalent efficacy has been established and equivalent safety has been established. And th this is also true for immunogenicity demonstrating the patients who are being administered with glargin safely can switch. Landers can safely switch over to Biocon's insulin glargin. And that was also a regulatory requirement. And, and what were the results of these clinical trials and the robust results? The data from all those well-conducted randomized clinical trials have resulted in the US FDA approval of the first interchangeable biosimilar insulin product. And that was the Bicon's insulin glargin. And this approval is for the additional safety. And this approval is for the high quality which is maintained and for the potentially very important. Very important because insulin is highly priced globally. And this is a cost effective option for treating diabetes. And of course, this is an interchangeable insulin. So I will spend another two to three minutes with a, uh, a switching study from India conducted from our own country. And this is conducted by Dr. Supradik from Kolkata, a good friend of all of us a retrospective study in type 2 diabetes with chronic kidney disease. And here the hemoglobin A1C reduction was 2.83 percentage. And uh, <clears throat> there were also no significant increase in hypoglycemia. So switching from a reference glargin to an affordable and quality biosimilar glargin has resulted in better patient adherence. And that, this has also res resulted in improved health outcomes. So the India switch study, if you Closely look at the design and how the patients were initially on glargin, so we know the glargin, and then they were randomized to biosimilar glargin in one arm and the reference glargin in the other arm. And this was a hemoglobin A1C difference 7.8 versus 7.7, .7, but again establishing the fact that Bicon's insulin glargin is non inferior to the reference landers, demonstrating equivalent efficacy and the safety in type 2 diabetes in the presence of chronic kidney disease. So this has been established in multiple well-conducted studies. So now going back to the original question, how to pick up the best from among the lot? So there are multiple challenges in the Indian market. We are probably offering the best only to affordable patients, but now the best is available even for the patients who cannot afford because in India, we have middle class and the lower middle class, majority of our patients. And we can now confidently move towards affordable options. And we need not delay the initiation of insulin. We can initiate insulin sufficiently early because we have affordable and we have safe options to reduce the morbidity and mortality, thereby ultimately reducing the cost of treating diabetes. So my objective is only to demonstrate the safety and efficacy of a biosimilar, which is an originally made in India formulation. And also to underscore the importance of selecting the best from among the multiple choices of biosimilars available in the market. Ultimately, our patients come first. So thank you, thank you, my dear friends, for giving me an opportunity online.